Hi, this is a demo of the um, truss bridge building exercise we have for our TIJ-10 course. The objective here is to take some pre-cut stock that is 23 inches in length, half an inch tall, eighth of an inch wide. With 10 of these things, your challenge is to create a bridge that will uh, sustain a, a weight on it, up to 100 pounds or even more. And I'm going to use SketchUp for Schools to model this and pre-visualize it because it helps to figure out what kind of resources you need, how many of these sticks you need to do what, and how to put things together. But learning how to use SketchUp to fabricate something like this is a good exercise all on its own. So let's get started with a brand new model. And I'm going to use feet and inches because we're doing this in Imperial. And I'll start by getting rid of Dr. Temple Brandon. Now the first place I like to start is if I'm going to build the bridge this way, and it's just a small little model, um, I'm going to start at the origin and I want to build it across this way. So I'm actually going to open up my views and I'm going to view it from the the right side like this and I'll start at that origin and draw the profile of that piece of stock. Click at the origin and I'm just going to drag up, not, not clicking again, but I'm going to type in the dimensions that I need and I need it to be 0.5 comma 1 8th to get that profile. And once again it's really small so I'll use the wheel mouse to zoom in on it. Ah, there's the profile of that piece of stock. And with the push-pull tool, I hit P on my keyboard. I can start pulling it this direction, type 23, and I've got my 23-inch piece of stock to start out with. Now, one of, the things, one of the things that this is really good for is getting used to the advantages of components and groups. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to triple-click it. One, two, three. And I'm going to right-mouse click it and turn it into a component that I'll call beam. And I'm going to base most of what I do uh, on this beam. So once again, here's our objective with this, is we want to create arches that are going to support greater weights. And you got to figure out how many arches you want to have here. I'm going to put four arches, like having four upside down V's all across this thing. So it makes sense at this point in time to start using the tape measure tool and figuring out where these peaks should go. And first peak I'm going to take, I'm going to drag this back, drag a guideline using the tape measure tool. And the first time you drag this across, you can find the midpoint pretty easily by dragging across and looking for where it snaps. Aha, 11 and a half inches happens to be half of 23. And then I have to draw one or put another guideline at the quarter point. So if I have to go half of 11 and a half, half of an 11 and a half, uh, math is hard, but if I start dragging another guideline this direction and I put half of 11 and a half is 5.75, and I type that in and hit enter, I get my guideline exactly at the quarter point. If my math is right, and I think it is. I'll do the same thing this direction, 5.75. And if I view this thing from the front, remember these views are really handy for quickly seeing what you need to see. Yeah, that looks to me like we've got uh, four equal quarters. So now I can start figuring out where my arches are going to go. And again, this is a great exercise for figuring out how you can manipulate these things. I am going to copy this object and I'm going to draw uh, a diagonal of 45. I'm going to make these arches at 45. It's one of the decisions you have. So if I want to put another piece down, I'll just paste, put it out here for a second, and I'll put this thing at the 45 degrees by using the rotate tool. Okay. Grab this point here, grab this point here, start angling it up, type in 45, and I've got a perfect 45 degree member for this thing to, to follow. Now this thing is a component, so anything I do to this is going to happen to this piece in the back. They're basically clones of each other. But I don't want to keep imposing these things because I want to chop this thing off at the appropriate height and put some 45 degree cuts to it. So I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to right mouse click and hit explode. And that turns it back into just faces and lines again, faces and edges. Now I can still group it, and maybe that's a good idea. Groups are different. Groups are individual objects, and they don't affect each other. But that does bind everything all together. To edit this object, I'm going to double click on it so I can keep on playing with it. And certainly one of the things I want to do is I'm going to put some nice tapered edges to this like this. Push pull. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to create, um, actually, you know what? I think I would like to make this not into a group. I'm going to explode this now. I just realized, whoops, I'm inside of it. Right mouse click, explode it. This would be useful if it was a different kind of component called member, because I'm going to use this all over the place. So right mouse click, let's make it a component. Let's call it member. 
because I can clone this thing all over the place and I will want to sort of change it as we go and you'll see the advantage of components in a second when I do this. Um, for the heck of it, I might as well put this in place too. I would like to have this point of the object line up to this point. Whoops, it's not doing it. On the beam, I'll get in a little closer. Sometimes you got to do this in a few tries, but usually you can line these things up just moving it closer and closer. Yep, that's what I wanted. So what I want to do is I would like to take a copy of this thing. I'll go outside of the object. I can tell it's I'm inside the component, so I'll double click outside. Now it's bounded by a blue box. I'm going to copy this thing using the move and duplicate. I go to move mode. I tap the uh, control key once and I get a little plus beside there. And then I would like to move it by the interior point here. And I'd like to put it at that point there. So zooming in and out. Yeah, I still got my right mode. Hopefully I can do this with just one movement, but I might have to fix it later. I want to put it right about there. And that didn't quite go where I... Oh, it did. What do you know? So it's on the outside surface of this, and those points lined up. That's the point I wanted to have line up. And now what I have to do is I have to rotate this thing. So it's facing the other direction. Ah, oh, that's easy to do, though. I can rotate it by going to my Rotate tool. It's right there. I would like to rotate it on this plane, the blue plane. And if I hold down the shift key, because I'm on the ground right now, it's got the right rotation, I'm now going to go up and say, okay, I'll use this point here to do the rotation. And it's pretty good about doing it for me, just like that. I held the shift so it maintained the plane of rotation for me. Now, this is uh, going to be popped to the outside of the beam, so I'll do a little bit of movement here. Grab the object, move mode. I like grabbing points to move these things around. You know, I'll just move it roughly like this because what I really want to do is move this point here to match that guideline there and it just snaps into place. And now you get the idea. We're building this truss. Now this thing's way too big so you know what I'm gonna have to do another little trim to this thing. And here's how I'll do that. Uh, which object do I have? I have the right hand object. Now this is the beauty of components. When I trim this right hand component the left hand will trim identically, and if I've done this right, uh, this should be a piece of cake. I'll double click to select that object so I can edit it. Where these pieces intersect, I would like to draw uh, a vertical line. Use push-pull, and I'll push this through, and I have just trimmed this thing off so I've got a perfect arch, exactly as I need it. And I hope you're seeing where this is going now. So now if I take both those objects, I'll hold the shift key down to select both of them. I could right mouse click this, and I could make a group of that. So I've got my arch truss, and now what I would like to do is I'd like to duplicate that, and I'll show you another really cool trick with this if I can zoom in just the right amount, maybe get rid of that so we can see it. This is a good one, if it'll work. So I can multiply and copy at the same time. So already in move mode, I can start moving this thing. Hitting control, I can make a duplicate, but if I can grab just the right point, click, drag it along, put it at exactly the right point, and click to put it in place. Now before anything else happens, I'd like to multiply this a total of three times. So I'm going to hit asterisk and three and enter. And I get a total of three copies. And this is a fast way of working. And if everything has worked out perfectly, you can check your work. What do you know? This lines up absolutely perfectly. The math, the dimensions, all that sort of stuff. Flawless. I got lucky this time. And this whole thing, this whole thing could be grouped actually be even smarter. Let's turn it into a component. So if we make any changes to this, it's duplicate will do this. This will be a, a uh, component called truss. And to build a bridge, there's lots of choices you still have to make. I'm going to multiply this and copy it across. So I'm in move mode. I hit control, so I duplicate. I'll grab this and move it on over here. And now I've got that duplicate. Now the dimensions and where you want to move this, how wide your, the bridge is, that depends on the load that you're putting into it, the, what objects you're putting into it. There's still more that we have to do. But uh, I'm just going to sort of, you know, I'll get this as, about as far as I need to get it. Let's see, I would really like to rotate it around a point right about there. So first I'm going to do a rotation to it. I'll click here, go back into rotate. Again, I'm hovering over the plane that I want to rotate, so I'm going to make the blue. I'll hold shift to lock that rotation point and I'll find something that's at the middle of this object here and here and I'll flip it around that way. I hope, at least I hope it will. There it is. Looks like I got it. 
Yep. So now the members are on the outside of the beam. I rotate this thing around so I've got myself a pretty symmetrical looking bridge so far. And then one more thing I'll do to show the power of the component. I realize, oh man, I needed to have a top beam going across there too. Well, this is actually really easy. I'll go edit this component by double clicking it. And I'll just get myself set up so this will work. I'm just going to use a rectangle. Click from there to there. And take it all the way down to that point there. And notice that it duplicates it on this component. Again, the beauty of components is you work half as hard if you get things put in place. A push-pull. I'll pull it out by one eighth of an inch. Good. So I know this member is not the right height. Uh, it should be a half inch. I'm going to use the tape measure tool. I'll go to the outside edge so I can see this easily and drag it up. And I'll type in 0.5 and put a mark there. This is the half inch point. And then I can use push-pull and I can reduce the height of that to where it should be right there. And now I know for sure there's a half inch across the top. Okay, so this is the, the, the start of the whole thing. You can see where this is shaping up, but there's some techniques that'll be hopefully helpful for you to start building your bridge. There's lots more that needs to be done with it, but let's end it here and see if this works for you.